afternoon ladies and gentlemen first of all thank you very much giving me this opportunity yes. and the and for the clinical society so during next few minutes also uh, i will be talking about outbreak response and how clinician can help during the outbreak situation and i'll be talking about uh, practical aspect during the outbreak and uh, what we expect as a consultant in public care from you as a clinician in the public sector during the outbreak scenario and mitigation process so during my presentation i'll be touch upon these three areas mainly first i'll describe what is an outbreak and phases of outbreak and lastly clinician what are your during the outbreak management. When I say clinician, it is not limited to doctors working in the curative sector, uh, I mean, uh, health, government health institution or TH Kalutara, but clinician working in the private sector and also general practitioners can play a crucial role in outbreak management in a given scenario. So what is an outbreak? So outbreak can be defined as the occurrence of the particular disease, the particular disease in excess of what we would normally be expected. So I have highlighted few words here. Excess amount of the cases from what we normally be expected. In the defined population, the defined time frame. This is very important. Normally, outbreak can be restricted for the limited uh, geopolitical zone, such as a small geopolitical zone, such as a uh, gram lazari division, PHI division, or sometimes it will expand or uh, go away from that particular source and uh, spread for the several region, district, or sometimes process the boundaries and uh, spread several countries. At the end, it can spread all over the world, all over the globe, as you experience during the COVID pandemic. And duration, again, it's vary from disease to disease. It will take few days, or sometimes weeks, sometimes months, or as we saw in, seen in a uh, COVID pandemic, it will last for more than years or sometimes will last for even decades. So how we do, how do we know whether there's an outbreak or not? So normally, most of the time, we have our uh, surveillance, disease surveillance data for the most of the disease. This is uh, dengue uh, cases report over the period of time across the year. So you can see we, we have identified the pattern. So based on the existing data collected throughout the period, we can predict statistically the baseline. So the expected level for the given population and the given, uh, the given geographical zone, the baseline. Even up to the PHI level, we can predict. So we know the baseline. If we are getting more and more cases. We know that there's an outbreak is going on. So then we have to act upon. So we can say, you can see outbreak, dengue outbreak always correlated with two monsoon season we are getting during the year. Also, the outbreak, it's not, uh, we are not. Uh, going to talk about the num huge number, but sometimes for the, some disease, even a single case is uh, considered as an outbreak. If you consider the malaria, we know the malaria has been eliminated, uh, I think from uh, 2012, and we received the elimination certificate in 2016. So, however, we continue the uh, surveillance system. So in that case, even a single malaria case is considered as an outbreak. 
you don't need to have a huge number. So if you have a polymyelitis case, single case, it is an outbreak. And also, the disease caused by the unknown agent, maybe bacteria, fungus, or virus, previously unknown cause, is also considered as an outbreak. And if you have an unknown disease, previously unknown disease, that is also considered as an outbreak. That is a baseline information regarding an outbreak. And there are three phases. There are three phases of outbreak. So those three phases are interrelated, interconnected in terms of outbreak management. So number one, pre-outbreak phase, which is called as preparedness phase, and then the outbreak response phase, and the post-outbreak phase. So if you don't do the preparedness phase, you can't do your maximum during the response phase. And also you have to evaluate the situation during the post outbreak, outbreak period, and you have to take the corrective measurement during that phase. So those are the three phases. So each phase, you have your specific role as a clinician. So regarding the preparedness place, as you know, from the morning, we talk about the readiness and preparedness. The time to time we are getting alert from the certain authorities, from the local authorities, as well as the foreign agencies. We have to be vigilant. We have to keep your eye open to the those trend, impending trend of the outbreak. And uh, you are getting certain information locally as well as globally. And you have to assess your capacity. This is the period you have to build your capacity within your institution. Your readiness need to be enhanced. You, have, you can conduct your training within the institution and you should have a treatment guideline. You can't take the capacity decision during the outbreak. Therefore, you should be ready with the guideline. What to do and what not to do. Right? So, also, you have to ensure the availability of the clinical uh, guideline and the medicine, other requirements. At last, the most important thing is you should be able to coordinate with the relevant authorities. So I do believe it's a high time to have good communication between the security sector and the preventive sector in terms of outbreak management because we need your support and, and I think you need our support as well. During this phase, this is for also called as a health system capacity building period. So during this phase, you can prepare your team, your capacity, and enhance your readiness to counteract with the future outbreak incidents. So this is based on research. So if you enhance the health system capacity prior to the outbreak, you can reduce you can reduce the impact of the outbreak. This is a normal epidemic curve. So if you prepare to the outbreak, you can reduce this much of impact. So you can reduce the healthcare burden and healthcare cost, which is most important in current context in our country. If you're well prepared, you can reduce the cost and burden. So this is based on evidence and this is why it is important the preparedness space of the outbreak. So during the response phase, the phase number two, what can clinician do? So normally patient come to you are the people who, who are the first line contact with the patient. Do you have to have a proper assessment? Actually, you have to go back to your medical student period. You have to take the proper history, examination and investigation. When I say history, all the components of history are important. Social history, family history, contact history, travel history, all those things are very important in outbreak, right? So then sometimes you need to isolate the patient. You have to provide care and treat the patient and do the proper examination. For certain cases, you should do lab laboratory investigation. So again, based on literature and research evidence, if you early respond to the case, 
and early response during the outbreak. You can prevent this much of potential cases. You can prevent this much of potential cases if you treat early and respond early. Detect the case early and treat the patient early and report the patient case, all the cases early as possible. You can reduce this much of potential cases. So see how can we do if you are well prepared and act upon as early as possible. So therefore, start treatment as early as possible based on the clinical guidance. You can't do the haphazard thing, as I mentioned earlier. So you have to do, you have to abide or adhere to the clinical guideline. And uh, important thing is you have to report each and every case. That is where you are lacking. I think as a clinician, you do your maximum, actually more than maximum, more than 100% for the patient. You think your duty is to treat and cure the patient, but sometimes you forget to always tend to forget to report the case. That is most one of the most important component during the outbreak management. Of course, you have to isolate certain cases and certain preventive measurement can be started within the institution itself. You have to isolate the cases, certain cases, quarantine the patient, and vector control activities can be initiated from the institution itself and prevent contact with the vector, especially in terms of when you consider dengue cases. And we have to practice uh, certain hygienic uh, practices within the institution. Not only that, as a treating clinician, you are responsibility is to educate the patient and empower the patient so during the during the outbreak the patient come with the different kind of myths belief and different sort of psychological distress patient answers distress and sometimes uh, they uh, sometimes they forget to adhere to the medical advices and do some uncertain un un unwanted things so then your duty is, is to educate and empower the public and combating with the mal, uh, malinformation, misinformation. So basically, uh, outbreak response can be divided into main two arms, immediate control measures, which include treatment, prophylaxis, vaccination, and so on. And you have to do the pro, uh, further investigation. So idea is to do the further investigation is to identify the etiological agent, mode of transmission, and vehicle of transmission, and identify the source, source in the field. That is the one of the most important thing is outbreak management. To do that, we need information. As a public health professional, we need information. We need person type place information. So while treating the patient, we need that kind of information from your side to our side. Why we need? We have to have a proper analysis. So person, place, and time analysis, we evaluate and we do preventive measurement simultaneously while we are treating the patient within the institution. We are taking preventive measurement in the field. Those aspects are very important in the outbreak prevention. So those are this, this is the picture of uh, our normal notification uh, system. This may be uh, confusing you. So to simplify the thing, what we can do now, once the patient come to you, you treat the patient, you say, same time you collect data and that collected data need to be sent for the, our, our party, our system, preventive sector. So normally we gather information, simultaneously we do field investigation and corrective measurement at the field level. At the same time we send information to the national level and national level, the information will be analyzed, evaluated and they take policy decision and send back to you. So your initial information is very crucial. If you don't take the information and send to us, Within the given time frame, we can't take the decision at the field level as well as at the national level. So there are common mistakes happen during the outbreak. 
So normally we expect you to report or notify the notifiable case on such mission. So why, why we need that to prevent to prevent further spreading of the disease. We have to notify the case on suspicion. You don't need to wait till the confirmation. And also incomplete information is another problem. Legible handwriting and uh, poor quality of the notification system is a problem. So we can't identify the patient within the field. And uh, late notification. So most of the time, the notification is done when the patient is discharged. So no point. So we have to have uh, information as early as possible to take mitigation and action at the field level. So therefore, notification of all suspected notifiable diseases is very important task to be done on suspicions. We need quality information to control the corrective measurement at the field level. So normally, this is the notification form. To be honest, I hated when I was a house officer. Right? But now I realize the importance of this. Actually, very, this is very important to fill the, this notification form at the at the institutional level and send it to the us as early as possible. So what we do at the field level, once you send the information to the uh, for the preventive sector, as a preventive sector worker, now we go to the field level. Now, now nowadays we use the technology, use the uh, GIS system. So we are doing mapping. So you can see several red dots here and there. This is a map of Kalutara MOH area. And uh, uh, which includes several Gramudari division. So this is related to the dengue cases. Now we once you receive the information, we go to the field and we do the corrective measurement at the field level. And also we are mapping these things. And you can see the several clusters here, the one cluster, another cluster, another cluster. What happens if we do if you don't take corrective measurement here, the disease will spread further. This is not, this is at the moment is confined to the this particular PHI or actually the division, but it can spread further. So what will happen? You will get more and more cases. Your people will be overburdened. There will be more healthcare cost for the institution. So that kind of information is very important. That this is another example. This is for the measles. So as you know, we have measles epidemic during last last year. Actually, the measles has been eliminated from the Sri Lanka, and we received the elimination certificate in 2019. But unfortunately, due to, due to certain uh, group of people, again the measles reappeared. It it uh, started in Colombo CMC area. Only the single case detected around May last year, but within few months will spread all over the country, not all over the country, basically in the western province, then the southern, and some sporadic cases around the country, and also the Jasna. So once you receive this information from your side, we are mapping. So we mapping and take decision based on this evidence. So we conducted last January, we conducted measles special vaccination program. This decision was taken based on evidence. This is called evidence-based decision. So the uh, on, vaccination program conducted only in the Western province and part of the Southern province, only Gaul and Madhra district, and then Jaffna and uh, some part of the Kurnagala district. So to that, that kind of policy decision, we need information. So that information coming from should come from the UI. So that is why I am again and again emphasizing. So normally, what is happened? You treat and send information to us. If you don't do that, what will happen? If you don't do that, the disease will spread all over the place in the field. And what, what will happen next? You will get more and more cases. 
you will get more and more complicated case, cases. You have to put more attention on those patients. You have to put more money, more resources, more manpower. Ultimately, your people get exhausted. Right? Then what will happen? We are getting more notification. At the end, our people also get exhausted. So ultimately, it becomes vicious cycle. So out, after that, outbreak is out of control. We can't control outbreak anymore. So therefore, the initial step during the outbreak is very important, and your role is very important. The bit of resource mobilization during outbreak, actually the outbreak is an emergency. So it's sudden onset, we, are, we have limited resources, therefore we need your help. We need to conduct several vaccination program. We have to establish certain uh, camps, quarantine centers. For that, we need clinical support. Actually, we received during the pandemic. So uh, in addition to that, during the next few slides, I want to talk about few specific diseases, starting from the malaria. Why I'm talking about this is because Sri Lanka's malaria, three countries at the moment, we don't have endogenous malaria within the country. However, it's as a clinic treating physician, you are all needs to take the proper uh, involved in the, in the surveillance system. Why I'm saying this? Because last year, we had a malaria death within the country, which occurred in the draining zone of the TH country, right? So patient had a travel history to the uh, African country, but TTN, TD physician forgot to ask travel history, or it's been treated by the several general practitioners, but by the time was di diagnosis made, it was too late. The young person passed away due to malaria, but I think it's very important to have a travel history, social history, and contact history. If you come across the fever patient, please ask travel history as well. This is this is the area which is especially considered the trading zone is the one of the most vulnerable area due to the travel and trading, and so many people are traveling to the uh, endemic country, especially Africa, for the business purposes. So if you come across the patient with the history, with history of travel history with the fever, always suspect malaria. So even a single malaria case is an outbreak. So then I want to talk about leprosy. So that uh, leprosy at the moment, leprosy is an outbreak, especially in the coastal zone, starting from Moratua, then Panadura, Vadura, Halutura, then up to down south. So we have excess number of leprosy cases. So when you, as a general practitioner or clinician or the treating physician at the teaching hospital, or wherever you work, if you come across such case, if you suspect, please refer them to the dermatological clinics. Normally for the leprosy case, we have collaborative action with the curative sector and the curative sector. Normally dermatological clinics, they identify the uh, leprosy case, they send information to us. So our PHIs and our teams go to the household level and they visit, visit the places and contact tracing can be done. If you identify the contacts, then it is easy you to treat the patient at the institutional level. It's a kind of collaborative kind of activity. So to do that, again, we need data. Tuberculosis, again, the epidemic, the outbreak, this is the estimated number of the TB, the TB cases, but at the moment, we are dealing with tip of the outbreak. We detected less than expected. So there are so many TB cases within the community. They are not treated. So they are not identified. So to counteract the problem, we have identified several healthcare institutions and teaching hospital further is one of the institutions. So we expect, especially medical officers working in the OPD session, if you come across a patient uh, coming with the fever, and for more than two weeks, please suspect TB. So, so our indicator is you have to send at least 2% of the total OPD attended to the 
for the investigation. At the moment, when I visited last week, it is around 1.2 or 1.3. So the target is 2%. If you come across a patient with the cough for more than two weeks, please send the sample or please uh, send patient sample to the for the TB test. That's how we can identify unknown TB case. This is called presumptive TB, suspect TB. So during next few minutes, I will talk about acute injury. What do you think about this? This is not the communicable problem, but acute injury itself also considered as an outbreak. So we need, according to your data, the dog bites, animal bites, RTA and pop. A uh, domestic falls are the most prevalent. However, this is severely underreported. This is a normal form, but it has to be filled by the treating physician at the institutional level. These are the information we have received. So, uh, according to the last year, last year data, uh, there's a high amount of faults, domestic faults, and stuff hit by other objects got increased. And why we need this information, once you receive, we receive this information to the medical officer of non-communicable disease, we send it to the national level, but simultaneously we take a mitigation action at the field level. So last uh, December, uh, we had six or seven drowning cases around the lagoon, Paltura lagoon. After we received those information, we visited the places and we take multi-sector, we, uh, we took certain action with the several stakeholders. In fact, police, Navy, and uh, people from the divisional secretary are involved in the process. At the moment, there are certain steps have been taken and so far we don't have a single case within that vicinity. So uh, those things need to be emphasized. So uh, in summary, I would say the outbreak need to be mitigated with the collaborative action from curative sector and the preventive sector. And your participation is very important. Your information is very important. Your time information is very important. And we should have a collaborative action in future. Thank you very much.